arriving in the early morning. Our plan for the day is to visit as many islands scattered around Banda as possible. The Banda Islands consist of three main islands, which includes Banda Neira, Banda Api, and Banda Besar, as well as four minor islands, which includes the islands of Ai, Hata, Shahrir, and Run. The first island we went to was Run. Not only did the island include clear blue seas and pure white sand, obviously, with the attractive sands and the blue seas calmly crashing into the beach, I couldn't resist getting down under. Unfortunately for me, I didn't prepare myself with a proper diving gear, which meant that I had to resort to the next best thing, snorkeling. It was also the site of an important historical agreement between the English and the Dutch regarding the future of the nutmeg trade. Okay, so I was just done snorkeling near uh, Run Island here, and so I want to do a little explaining about what Run Island is. So, a fun fact about Run Island is during a certain Anglo Dutch treaty, in which I forgot which year it was, uh, Basically, since the Dutch won a monopoly over nutmegs in Banda Islands, is that they forced the British to trade over this island, which had back then lots of nutmegs, with an, uh, with an area in New Amsterdam called Manhattan. And so, basically, what you would call modern day Manhattan was traded for this island right here, which was Run Island. Our second destination leads us to the remote island of Ai. It's important to note that the island of Ai does not have any access towards electricity or fresh water, and basic supplies have to be delivered from Banda Neira. Fortunately, the battery for my camera was low, and since there were no electricity, I couldn't charge my camera and so there were limited footage available. As you may expect from an island of spices, there is also another fort located in Ai named Fort Revenge. So currently, I'm sitting on top of Fort Revenge. So a little bit of a backstory is that... So... Actually, who am I kidding? I have no idea about the backstory of this fort. Since the condition of the fort is very rough, and contemporary documents of the island is next to none, the service of the fort throughout its history is just as much of a speculation as how the fort got its name Revenge. One account suggests that when the Dutch refused to give the island of Neira to the English, in 1609, the English instead took control of the small island of Ai, in which they constructed a small fort. Outraged by this attack, the Dutch then invaded the island, defeating the English and later upgrading the fort in 1660. It was also renamed Fort Revenge in English to remind them of the Dutch determination in securing monopoly over nutmeg. Alright, now since there are no cameramans available because getting on top of this fort is really hard, uh, I'm forced to put the camera in a position like so, so you can't clearly see. But what I'm trying to say is, I'm quite impressed at the survival of these bastions because compared to other forts it's badly damaged but this one it's it still has positions where the cannons would be located and just behind me if you're able to see it is still a cannon it's still in a good shape and form but i don't know if it's still working 
Also, another thing I'd like to point out is why this fort isn't as great of a condition as Fort Belgica. I mean, like, literally Fort Belgica is in near perfect condition and it's massive, massive. It's really, really huge. But the reason as to why it's not as great as Fort Belgica is not because of its architectural model, but it's because this fort is located in an island where Bananera would be far away. It's too far away to send supplies for reconstructions. And I believe that the village wouldn't even have enough, no offense, enough uh, funds to fund such a huge construction because I believe it would take massive, massive amounts of funds to renovate this project and also because getting materials for like renovating the fort completely would take massive massive amounts of funds time and there wouldn't even be enough materials located here and so they have to import materials there and so i think it wouldn't be worth it okay so we've just made an interesting discovery because apparently i found a tunnel and i don't know where it leads and apparently my local guide also told me that he does not know where it went. So, we're gonna be the first ones in there. Well, at least that's what he told me. And so, what we're gonna do is... Oh! Apparently it is not a tunnel. But it is that of a empty cell. So, quite clearly, by the lack of human markings here, it's clearly seen that... This is unexplored yet, and so what I'm assuming that this is an armory or a barracks for the soldiers. This could also be a prisoner cell, but I am still in doubt. Well, so far, it looks really, really great because it's still intact where the rest of the fort is in ruins. And so, yeah, it's quite an extraordinary discovery I found. After exploring pretty much everything I could find the island, it's time to head out for the last and the biggest island inside of Banda, Banda Besar. Inside of Banda Besar lies the huge abundance of different spices, ranging around from cinnamons to almond and the famed nutmegs. Banda Besar is the exact representation of the famed Spice Islands. Our objective inside the island is to explore and observe the abundance of spices that lies on the plantations of the island. But getting there would be a difficult challenge, and as usual, we relied on the use of motorcycles to get there. Once we've reached the plantations, we were met with one of the many plantation owners of the island. Pa Amang is one of the more experienced farmers of the area, as he had been working there for decades. The plantation not only included the famed nutmegs, but also almonds and cinnamons. One of the cinnamon trees in fact caught my attention as he told me that this specific tree has lived for more than 300 years. This tree right here is a nutmeg tree. But you wouldn't believe it if I told you that this tree was actually 360 years old. No, it's that would mean that this tree would only be a few years apart than the end of the 30 years war and the end of the Protestant Reformation. That just gives you a glimpse of how old this tree is. Another important thing to note is that every time a nutmeg tree is grown, they would also have an almond tree beside it. So what an almond tree does, by the way, this is also 360 years old. An almond tree, instead of a nutmeg tree where the roots would stay together, an almond tree would expand its root and it would also expand its trees and also create branches. This means that the branches and the trees and the surrounding trees, which is almond trees, they would protect the nutmeg tree from getting any damages. Also, another thing to note is that a nutmeg tree wouldn't expand its roots. It wouldn't expand its roots unlike this, which is why, as you see in this tree right here, it might look like a normal tree, but this is actually 360 years old. And what it does is instead of keeping the roots all the way out, it just expands steadily above. It gets higher and higher and higher year by year. On my right hand is a nutmeg, but on my left hand is a tool that picks up nutmegs. And so this is a reconstruction of what the Dutch used to pick up nutmegs. Why is it that they use this system instead of just picking one nutmeg 
right from the tree. Well, you see, when the nutmeg falls, the value actually decreases. So, risking losing profit from these seeds that they control, what they do is, instead of just waiting for it to go to the ground, is that they wait for them to harvest, like this one, which is fermented, well, actually, which is ripe, and they pick them up like so, and then they pull it, and it falls here. So what it does is that it prevents it from falling to the ground. With different islands inside Banda controlling thousands and thousands of nutmegs, it's no wonder that the Dutch East India Company is still the richest company of all time. Some of you might still be asking, but how is it that they could be so rich just by selling nutmegs, even though there are thousands of them? Well, you see, it's a little thing called monopoly. When one company sells one object that is unknown to everybody else, that can't be reached by everybody else, obviously it would gain more attraction. Now imagine this. What if there was only one single company in the world that sold carrots? Obviously the price of that carrot would increase and obviously the company would get rich because nobody else could buy the carrots. The same goes for nutmegs and because nutmegs are so important as I've always mentioned, it's why the company became so rich. Everybody could only buy nutmegs from the East India Company. Paamang then also told me about the multi-purpose use of nutmegs and why it's so high in value today. Jadi kulitnya di anda bisa bikin buat candy, nutmeg jam, sirup, bijinya. Anda setelah mengering, anda bisa masak daging, ikan, masak kue. Jadi di 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 terserah anda anda taruh di mau buat apa saja bisa dia punya dalam ini untuk masak jadi kegunaannya banyak untuk kosmetik pengawet amunisi apa semua. So as previously explained, there's three different layers of a nutmeg. So first off, we've got the shell, and so what the shell could be turned into is basically sugars and alternative storage sugar and so second of all we've got the layers protecting the seed and uh, what this does is that it basically protects it from corroding or rottening it can be used to as previously stated to increase the flavor of the meat now this is the seed and so the smell of a nutmeg comes from the seed this could also be used <coughs> as i've always stated to extend the life of meat it can be extended up to four weeks with, uh, by spreading the sea, uh, the insides of the seed to the meat, which is why it is so crucial and which is why it's so important in the culture back then. Last, but certainly not the least, how can we not end the day than to visit the last fort inside of Banda? Fort Hollandia. Last, but certainly the most destroyed, we've got Fort Hollandia. Now, as for the damages, surprisingly, this fort wasn't actually in ruins because of cannons. They were actually caused by natural disasters, specifically earthquakes. So when earthquakes hit these islands, uh, some of the forts here were damaged, and one of them was Fort Hollandia. Climbing onto the ladder and inside of the fort's walls, the fort shows a clear mountainous view of Banda Api, as well as its surrounding waters, cementing its strategic positions over Banda Besar. Now, I have to admit, the view here is impressive. Not only that, I believe that this view actually serves a strategic position for the fort. Because as you know, maritime routes are very very important here because that's how trade works back then. You had to travel by sea. And so, a strategic position located in a hill near a river, as previously mentioned in Fort Belgica, 
it's very, very important because you can overview, you can get a complete overview of each merchant ships. And back then, you had these flags planted upon their ships, and so you can easily identify which one's friend or foe, which is why it serves a strategically, geographically strategic location in Banda, which is why uh, this port in itself, while in ruins, still has a really, really good view of the river and the mountain. To summarize the history of Fort Hollandia in the quickest way possible, in 1624, under the orders of Governor General Jan Peterson Cohen, and some further upgrades by Peter Black, the plan consists of a standard square fort with four bastions at the corner and one gate in the land side. The fort's guns face the strait between Banda Besar and Gunung Api Banda. The walls of coral stone are 7 meters high and 1 meter thick. Almost all of these were unfortunately destroyed by an earthquake in 1741. After the British invasion of Java, the damaged fort was later neglected by the British, leaving it into the state it is today. visiting three different islands from the early morning hours till the sun sets. The ride down the mountains from Fort Hollandia marks the end of my second day exploring the untold islands of Banda. And just from my experiences alone, it really shows how barely we Indonesians have scratched the surface of our own nation's history. Ships and give them the spices that they 